There we go. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday Chapel. Yep. Welcome, Miss Hancock, to our story as we check out what you presented on Monday, which was? Yep. So we looked at the story of Zacchaeus and we looked at um, how Jesus connects with everyone. Yep. And we came up with some questions for that. So let's have a look at those questions now. Some tricky ones. So those questions, Miss Hancock, what yeah, were they so that we on, looked at? Yeah, yep. so on Tuesday and Monday, I left you guys with these questions. So what might Jesus have said to Zacchaeus at his house that caused such a change? That yep. was the first question. Mm -hmm. And then the second question that leads out of that is, what might Jesus say to you if he came to your house? That's a pretty freaky mm -hmm. idea, eh? If Very Jesus actually showed up at your house. Yep. Uh, so we're going to talk through those couple of questions yep. and see where that takes us for how Jesus speaks into our lives today. Okay. So our first question, which is, uh, what might Jesus have said to Zacchaeus at his house that caused such a change? I'll ask some year sevens. And one of them said, I reckon that Jesus would have just gone to Zacchaeus and gone, don't be greedy. Well, what do you reckon, that makes sense it because does make sense. We, we know that Zacchaeus was rich and, and well, we know that he greedy. took a lot of money from a lot of people. And I mean, that was great when we saw him hiding all his money in the wall in that little clip at um, in chapel on, on Monday and Tuesday. Yep. Yeah, so he was a very greedy man. So that, that makes sense. Well, they would say that, but mm -hmm. do you reckon that would bring about the change? No, probably not. Probably no. not. <laughs> Another grade seven said he extended forgiveness to Zacchaeus in a nice way. And so they actually added in this in a nice way. Yeah. Maybe that's a little bit more on tr on track, hey? Yeah, that seems to me. I mean, the whole extending forgiveness thing does seem like a very Jesus sort of Speaking thing to do, to obviously. All right. yep. So there's some responses. Let's move on to some more. A couple other responses that uh, you guys came up with. One was, you are loved even though you have done heaps wrong, is what a student shared with me. And then someone didn't say these exact words in this order, but it's got their... Jesus showed unconditional love. He backed him up. He extended connection, but showed he is loved. So it's not really the words that Jesus would have spoken. No. But this year 12 student certainly clued in on yeah. what he believes was behind this massive change in Zacchaeus. Yeah, yeah well, those two both really make sense to me because yeah. especially when we look at the biblical text that we did on um on Monday and Tuesday, it sort of showed that whole unconditional love and just and just sitting down having a meal with someone yep. is showing love to them, you know, having a chat, being relational, that sort of thing. Yeah. So those two make, make sense. And me. it would appear we can read into it that Zacchaeus didn't have mm -hmm. to actually do anything no. for Jesus to accept him and and care for him. No. Well, they just sat he didn't there were no there were no conditions. No, that's which, right. Yeah. So some ideas there. Thanks for those students who come yeah, up with the, really those good. insights. A couple other things that were shared. You can see there on the screen. Maybe he threatened him, is what someone said, to get him to behave. And the other one is, you, a year 12 said, hey, fella, you might want to think about others as a means to get Zacchaeus to change his thought pattern and change his whole life. What do you there's, reckon about the power well, of that, Miss Hancock? There's a bit of law in there, isn't there? Yeah, and massively. as Christians, we, we believe in the law. So, you yes. know, pulling people into line and making sure they're doing the right thing. So I do understand that as well, but I don't. I'm more connecting with what we just saw last time. About that love yeah, and acceptance. Yeah, about showing love acceptance. Is what changed Zacchaeus, not some speaking of, hey, you better, you better do the right thing. Yeah, yeah you maybe threatened him and that's what brought the change around. Uh, I don't think it would have changed his heart the way that we saw, hey? No. no. Okay, so thanks to everybody who shared with those thoughts. Our second question is a little bit abstract. Like, we don't really ever imagine Jesus suddenly showing up at our house, knocking on the door. But we shared that. What might Jesus say to you if he came to your house? And a year 10 said? What's up, man? That's it. Like, just coming and being interested in knowing what's going on just in our a lives. Just having conversation, normal conversation with him, seeing yeah. how he's going, yep. That's pretty cool. Um, some year eights shared, uh, he would encourage us to communicate more with God and, though, with everyone more, not yeah, just so Jesus. That's the whole idea of connecting with everyone. So yeah. that's great. That's, yeah. that's good that they've come up with that. Some more. One grade 12 came up with a beautiful insight, which is that she thought that Jesus might say to her, 
don't put so much pressure on yourself. And for him to say that, Miss Hancock, mm. how, how's well, that I feel like you know he's like sort of she got the impression that Jesus wants to come in, enter into our lives, and try and think about all the struggles that we're going through. Yeah. Um, and wants to obviously help connect with us in that way by helping us and supporting us and comforting us and loving us. Yeah. To try and help us get through those difficult things. Yeah, that's awesome. Which is really what he did with Zacchaeus. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, exactly. And he comes in and speaks deeply into our most greatest needs mm. which is that we so that we know we're loved yeah and as we know we're loved then we know we don't have to put so much pressure on ourselves yeah we don't have to stress about things and yeah. worry about things that's yeah. awesome amongst all that one of the first persons i asked what would jesus say if he came to your house this little person said hey i'm not going to let him in shut the door shut the door not even open it he's there <laughs> i'm not letting him in and i was sort of a little bit sad about that but it also leads us into investigating this idea of it's it's hard mm. to let Jesus come into our house. Yeah, there's a lot of life. pressure there because we see Jesus, you know, obviously is amazing. Yeah. Um. So if we're looking from a humanistic sort of point of view with all our flaws and stuff, we automatically go, no, I don't want to let him in. He's yeah. going to see everything that's wrong with me. And that's... That's the very point. That yeah, can, but that's the very deal, point that we want him to come in. Yeah, definitely. Because he can deal with that, no, with, that with our before. struggles uh, and our fears, yeah. and and so we just encourage all of us to actually let him come in. Yeah, open the con- door. Open the door <laughs> and let and connect with him. Well, we're going to talk a bit we'll more about, about that. We'll talk about that. Let's yeah. yeah, look at a little line here from a song. I've written there on the slide: as Christians, we believe Jesus is close to us by us all the time. But then I've got there, the tricky part is to realise this. And I think that has highlighted Miss Hancock from something that popped into your head. So something that popped into my head is that um, when I was um, at uni, my uni days, that sort of thing, there was a band called called Common Trio and um, they wrote a song called Pray and there's the words, Mm. the words are on the screen and it says, and if you say that Jesus is alive, then he's walking right there by your side. Why do you ask WWJD? Now, WWJD was a big phenomenon um, in the ni- late 90s, maybe yeah, early some 2000s, time back, yeah. um, where it was meant, what would Jesus do? Um, and there were like wristbands, you could walk T-shirts, into Christians, yeah, everything. everything. Hey, yeah. WWJD all over it. Yeah, trying to promote this whole idea of what would Jesus do? Um, but as Paul Commentrio says there, well, why do you ask that? Like when we actually know that Jesus is with us all the time. So he's right there. You don't have to ask, what would he do? Just ask him. Yeah, he's there. let him work with him. He knows. I actually think you don't even have to ask him. He just knows what's going on. Yeah, and so he will play that out in your life. And so we understand that it's really tricky to have this experience, this awareness Mm. that Jesus is with us. Mm. But as we do that... It's such an awesome place to be and a way to go forward in life when we can do that. Yeah, so it's going back to that whole idea of inviting you into a house. Into yeah, into house. house. He's, well, invited into he's always life. in our house with us. Yes, well, I would you're true. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that person who said he wouldn't let him in, he's yeah. already there, but we do need to realise it. It's a yeah. bit tricky. It is a bit tricky. As we finish up this morning, looking at this idea of connecting with Jesus, a Bible reading did uh, come to mind, Miss Hancock. Yeah, so Philippians 4 verse 6 is on the screen, and it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and and petition, with thanksgiving, present present your request to God. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the beautiful things we get to be able to do uh, as we connect with Jesus. So that's our... So he's right there by us, but we can also obviously communicate through prayer and we can thank when we, we're praying, we don't just ask him for stuff all the time, we no, thank, thank him, him for everything as well. And ask him for help for others, all sorts. Yeah. yeah. One last little thought for today. Uh, we came across uh, Yeah, a little quote. Right there. Yeah, and it says once we encounter Jesus, we are never the same. We aren't, but I know that we mm. we don't always then do everything the right way. No, it doesn't mean a one-off thing where we just... All of a sudden are zapped and are perfect Christians forever after that. No, we're definitely not. And with that... We, um, yeah, so we just need to always reconnect with Jesus, make make a conscious effort to go, 
um, yep, I'm a Christian, Jesus is with me, um, you know, how can I continually have him in my life making Making better. a difference, yeah. making a difference. Yeah. Help me to see in new ways, help me to act in new ways. And that's what he does, Yeah. but it's easy for us to fall back. And you did say, wonder what happened to Zacchaeus afterwards. Yeah, I did think that. I mean, yeah. he might have fallen back into his old ways. Let's not hope so. Yeah, hope he <laughs> I'm sure he up. reconnected with Jesus. And I think, you know, it says Jesus connects with everyone and Jesus is role modeling to us that connection. And so therefore, you know, it shows us then how to go forward and connect with other people, other people as well. And to move in the in same love way. As yeah. he does. Yeah. Today we're going to have a go at something completely different. Being mindful is something that we've been looking at at our college over the years. And I've come across a seven minute mindfulness activity that is specifically designed to help us connect in with God yeah. through our breathing. And so I encourage all of us out there now, uh, when we go to the next slide, it'll be there for us, a seven minute meditation or mindfulness activity yep so find a comfortable spot yep where you are yeah and please have a go be respectful and see if you can it's encouraging us there as it says on the slide an opportunity to connect in with god be aware of ourselves in his presence so let's give that a go thanks for being with us for yeah, the thank you. Next. thanks yeah. miss hancock for coming in that's good yeah nice to be here and we'll catch you next week for god's story and our story again we will See ya. See you later. Take time to get yourself comfortable. You may wish to sit on a chair, on the floor, or even to lie down on the ground in constructive rest pose. Take time to get settled, to get yourself comfortable. Give yourself a moment to allow the chatter of your mind to still Allow the busyness, the long list of must-dos and should-dos to be put temporarily to the side. Now, come into stillness. This is a sacred time to reconnect with something less transient, to be still and to know God. Bring your focus to your breath. There's no need to force or take unusually deep breaths. Simply notice the rise and fall of each breath, marveling at this beautiful gift of life. Feel the wonder of life that is in you right now. Rabbis and scholars have shown that the name of God is actually unpronounceable. That if the characters of the name of God are actually spoken as written, there are no vowel sounds. And if read literally, these characters are experienced as breath. If you think about it this way, with each breath, we are saying God's name. What a beautiful and profound truth. With each breath, we can call upon the name of the Lord. Bring your focus afresh to this breath of life. Marvel in it. Find all in how close God is to us. He is closer to us than the air we breathe. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. As we are still in this time, we pause from the many activities of our lives to place our focus on Him, to 
simply know him, to be in his presence. With each breath, we acknowledge his name. To pause and reflect on the beauty of saying his name. Be still and know that he is God. Allow his stillness to wash over you. Come before him in quietness and trust. And if your mind has wandered, that's okay. Bring your focus back to your breath, the breath of life, the stillness of the creator of the universe resting in and around you. still before him, knowing he is God. And as we come to the end of this time of stillness, we acknowledge his presence is with us every moment of the day. He will never leave us or forsake us. As we move from this quiet moment in our busy day, take a moment to ask for his stillness to stay with you. Ask for his tangible presence to move with you as you face all that you must face today. Take the beauty of his stillness into your day. Even in the hustle and bustle, it is possible to be still and know that he is God.